Welcome to another video of Dead by Toxic. My name is Q Production, and today we have a special build today. Today we're going to be extremely toxic, and want to make sure the survivors have exactly no fun while playing Skull Merchant. In order to accomplish this goal, we have Hex Huntress Lullaby. What this perk does is every time a survivor were to fail a skill check when it comes to repairing or healing, an additional 6% regression penalty will occur, and every time we hook a survivor, we gain a token up to a maximum of 5, and every token makes it harder for the skill check warning to appear, so the skill check warning will appear much later, and then eventually it will become um, no skill check warning once we get 5 tokens. We have a Hex Undying, so we can protect our Hex Hunter's Lullaby. That's the only reason we use really really this perk. Dolan Tremors to block every single gen once we pick up a survivor. This way, that way we don't have to worry about any people trying to do gens while we are working on, um, while we hooking people. And that man's first to block the generator that people will get off of once we, um, hook a survivor. And then lastly, we have two really strong add ons. First one is shotgun speakers, where all survivors in the drone radius do not have skill check warnings and they last for 15 seconds after they leave. And then we have brown over generator to make all survivors oblivious, so then not only do they have no skill check warning, they also have no warning when we come towards them. And then we have the RPD badge, so we can go to RPD because this map, Raccoon City, is basically the best map for Skull Merchant. Goes the first, the two gens in the middle building almost always spawn together, and it makes it really, really easy to three gen. So because of that reason, we will become extremely toxic and win the game. Without further ado, let's the game so I can show you how great being toxic is. Okay, so in Raccoon City Police Station, East Wing as planned. Now you're probably wondering, why are you making this video about being toxic? And I am not a toxic person at all. The only reason I made this video, by the way, is because literally, I was just watching Dead by Daylight um, YouTubers, and I see a lot of Dead by the YouTubers use the title, this is the most toxic build. But I'm over here like, why would you want to make a toxic build? Not like, toxic because, um, makes the game unfun. Toxic as in like, you want to make the killer to be the most unfun killer ever to play against when you're playing, um, as killer, or when you're playing against the most survivor. So this build, like I said, we're going to basically make it so that way survivors can do gens. Now, most score merchants, at least chess merchants, will make it so that way survivors can do gens by controlling, by continuously patrolling them. Ah, uh, 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 we don't patrol gens. Instead, we just make it so that way they do gens and they can't do gens. By making it so that they, they progress more and more and more, making it basically impossible for the journey to be completed, we're going to make it basically not like unfair but they're gonna do gens and have a hard time doing gens and that's the funny part so sadly i can't put a drone up there because there's already a drone right next to that one gen so i have to like actually move that drone out of the way but because of that reason we're gonna chase this girl and some reason why she decides to go on this side of the pallet but go around the table first so all i really have to do is continuously keep activating that drone across the entire map until I get five stacks of Hex Lullaby. And then once I get five stacks, I'm going to just um, maybe stop worrying about it because I already got five stacks. But we want to protect the totem as much as possible. All I have to do really is, I don't even know what the second totem is, but the first one, as long as I protect one of the totems, I'm good. And because the totem is across the entire map, there's a higher chance no one will even go over there. We're really good. Throwing trimmers activated and it blocked every single gen besides gens that people are working on. And then, Deadman Switch activated so anyone who got off a gen will the gen will be blocked automatically. So now, as you can see, the main building gen, well, the middle building gen and the gen on the top floor are both, um, what's it called? Block. I don't know why I'm right there. I'm just bad sometimes. I'm not like my eyes. I'll be like, I'll look and then I'll end up realizing at the last second that I definitely, um, was not looking at a survivor. So, at this point, we don't really have to worry or try that hard because honestly, the survivors are not going to be able to do any gens. So all I have to do is patrol and give them all gens. All I really want to do is get five hooks. If I can get five hooks, I'm good. I kind of wish, honestly, they would move Hunter's I mean, Lullaby and make it so it's not five hooks because the perk is not that good. It is what happens in this build. We're going to make it extremely broken. So the survivors are continuing to try to do this generator. I really want to put a drone on this gen, but I kind of can't because the good drone location I want to put, I can't do that because I already have a drone there. As you can see, there are two people working on that gen. They're oblivious and they also have no skill check warning. Now, of course, they can still do the um, gen. It is a high chance they're going to fail the skill check. And they're going to end up not, <laughs> they're going to end up regressing the gen more and more and more and more and more. So because both of them are exposed, all I have to do is find one of them and they're exposed and oblivious. Luckily for me, I found the right person, so down him. 
and we're gonna quickly hook him after we keep this gen, so we make sure all the gens are regressing when we um start playing. And also because the only tremors is activated, we are gonna be able to easily uh, what's it called? We're gonna easily be able to block every gen. And every every gen is blocked, and I don't have to worry about anything. Get a second um, hook and get a really really easy stack of head hunters lullaby. But then he's like, power struggle. And I'm like, why do you have this perk? So now, technically every gen is so blocked, so I don't have to worry about that. But it's the fact that he has power struggle, and I have to do it all over again. And I really like um, the perk, doing tremors. I think doing tremors is really good on score merchant. Quick down, love to see it. I think doing tremors is a really good perk on score merchant um, in general. So the fact that it works really well on this toxic build is extremely fun. And most toxic builds, destroy survivors by making it ma uh, making them die really fast but now this one is just we're gonna make sure we can do gins and I love that it's just funny cuz I wanted to see how toxic I could be or at least how like dumb I can make the build and I came up with a really good idea make sure they can't do gins and it's not even chess merchant they're playing chess I'm playing checkers at this point I'm winning no matter what there's no way they can complete these gins fast enough and get out the edge gates before I kill them and I kind of want to do this again because honestly it was a lot of fun just for no reason being able to do this only score version I swear but anyway this person gonna get hooked now we gotta find the next person that we can try and hook them down them because if we can down more people we can get more um hex hundreds of by stats and the more stacks we got the easier it is to make it so they can't do jets there's a person right here we're gonna put a drone up there to protect that generator he's gonna scream multiple times and I he's gonna draw the pallet on me, which is fine. Break this unsafe pallet because even though it's not really the safest pallet in the world, I don't want to do it. So I want to break it. And as long as no one on my totem, like usual, I don't have to worry about much. So now we're gonna continuously go over here, but that's only exposed. And I'm worried now because I'm like, wait, they're near my totem. So they're gonna run in a really weird direction. I was gonna go after them, but then I realized that this person is right there. And I remember saying, why did you go after that person? I had to make sure I protected my drone. And also, I want to make sure I, um, I can just re-expose them later on. The person who I was chasing, I believe, was not actually the exposed person. I, we don't think they were. So because of that reason, I um, didn't try and chase them. But now we're going to try and chase someone. I realize that's the wrong person, so I'm going to the right person. These two right here are both exposed. So because of that reason, this girl is going to try and loop, I mean, do this thing. Luckily for me, I hit her. Now I'm going to go after him if I can find where he is. But then I realize it's more important to try and pick them up and you know the lane chambers block every single gen so now we don't have to worry about any gens anymore and we can continuously hook more people this is our third hex hunter's lullaby um token then when i realize someone is exposed and i gotta find where they are so luckily for me um i can use my radar and see where they are on the top floor and a generator does get completed because i never actually put a drone on that gen and he actually was hitting skill checks and i'm a little surprised so this person right here, um, there's two people, so I have to realize which one it is. And luckily for me, I found the right person. He's right in front of me. That's why you use the green outer one. He's oblivious. He doesn't know where I'm coming from. I had to pick him up quickly because I realized he might have power struggle. So I pick him up quickly, and I'm able to hook him on this hook. Four hunt, hex hunters level by set. My drone is gone, so I'm now I'm worried. I'm like, wait a minute, my drone's gone. There's one of my totem. And luckily for me. No, they didn't see the totem, they went straight for the gen. I don't know why, but I'm not mad. So now, as a result, we can go to this next person and we hopefully get another stack. And that person is, um, just got unhooked. So we really, no one's doing any gens. And even if they were doing gens, they can't do gens because they're going to be, um, is going to have really, really hard skill checks. This person is going to go in the middle of nowhere. I don't really have to worry about them, though. All I care about is the totem. So we're going to continuously chase them no matter what. But then I realized that he's about at this pallet, and this pallet is so stupid. So I'm just gonna wait for him to vault it. But he vaults really weirdly for some weird reason. So now I'm able to down him. Make sure I re with that drone. Pick them up. Throw in tremors. Block every gen. Look around and see which gen they're on. And we look and we see they're on the gen at the top again, which they always seem to be doing. Last time I checked, that gen was kind of like less than halfway full. Now let's see it, how far it is. But now there is no. What's it called? Now that Hunter's Lullaby is a thing, I have the ability to make it so there's no skill check warning. I'm putting a drone up there just so I can also make them oblivious. Hoping they're gonna fall down here so I can kill them. Let's wait, and as I thought, they're gonna fall down. Now she's fell down, I got a free hit for no reason. 
we I gotta be that drone and I'll drink after this girl and this the bill is literally working out so well. It really went exactly as planned. Honestly, I expected them to complete one gen at least, maybe two, because it is kinda hard to get five hundred low by stacks immediately. So I expected one gen to be completed. But it's the fact that they only got one and now I already got five. It's just so good. Now this girl is kinda in a bad position. This guy is gonna try and body block, but the problem is I'm perfectly fine with someone body blocking because now you have to, now you are what's it called, deep wounded, and all I have to do is worry about um, healing you one more time. Not to mention also because we have five times I've had his little body, I don't really have to worry about gems. Even though someone did this complete gym right there, that gym was already high on progress, so they probably just powered through it no matter what. But I realized that I knew I heard of something. Well, I knew I, I saw blood on the ground, I mean, so I was like, what the world? So, there's a lot of blood on the map, though, even though it's, like, not even the blood from Survivor, just the blood in general on the map. So, I was really confused, but luckily, I found the person who was healing, and I was in another Nicholas Cage, and I'm going to make sure that drone is always on. And now, two gens are completed, and there's no way they're going to be able to do any more gens, so I'm not going to allow it. Even if they were complete gens. That's the thing about this build, is the make it so toxic is the fact that it, like, they, the survivors think they have a chance, and that makes it so much better. Because even if the survivors were able to complete the gens, it wouldn't matter because the amount of time it takes them to complete a gen while focusing on skill checks while being oblivious means I can sneak up on them and murder them immediately, and doing that is just so fun. Three survivors in one room make it easy party for me, death to all. Because of that reason, we're going to go back to exactly what happened last time where this girl is trying to vault, these, vault this window. But I'm not gonna let her do that. Two people are exposed. I mean, two people are being uh, tough in my drone and also gonna be oblivious. And it looks like one Nicholas Cage will be exposed, and he is. On top of that generator, I know he's not gonna have. I know there's no way he's gonna do that gen because of the uh, no skill check warning. So we're gonna fall down, and then we're gonna wait for him to fall down here. Yeah, I know he'll fall, and lo and behold, he falls. But then sadly. Someone is on my Hex Hunter's Lullaby and it gets destroyed, and I'm like, well, there goes the build. Just kidding, that's exactly the reason why we use um, our add-ons. Because even though we lost our Hex Hunter's Lullaby, what did we gain in the progress? We lost one person's dead, two people are almost dead on hook, if not dead on hook. And we have add-ons that do the same exact thing that Hex Hunter's Lullaby does. So basically, no matter what, they're still going to be dead. And now this person is exposed, and there is no way they're going to be able to get away from me. They can use their perks to move a little faster, they can vault windows, all they want to do, but it's not going to matter, because you will die. This pallet is already gone, so there's no way they can go over here and use that pallet. Sadly, the person body blocks, and I have to deal with that. But it's fine, because, you know, my drone, I can just reactivate it and make the person oblivious, I mean, make the person oblivious or exposed again. But I'm going to go a different direction and try my game, and try and make them not know where I'm coming from. And as a result, Nicolas Cage is down on the ground, but there's another Nicholas Cage who is exposed. All I have to do is try and find where he is and drop down on him. And lo and behold, he's right there. He is going, I believe, up the stairs. Or he's gonna go heal the person. He's gonna go heal the person, so I'm gonna go try and intercept as planned. And we end up intercepting, redoubting the person who got picked up. And now we found Nicholas Cage again, and there's no way he can go anywhere. There's a pallet in this room, but he's too far from the pallet, so I'm gonna hit him. And now we have the ability to down this person, pick them up, throwing dreamers gonna activate blocking every gen. This build is just so good. I love this build. It's so dumb. And I could actually make this build even better by just using even more general regression perks. But I didn't want to use general regression perks. I wanted to use perks that make the gens just slow down. Make it so they have to do gens and they are inclined to do gens. But make it so it's impossible for them to do gens at the same exact time. It's just so funny. Like, you don't need gen regression when you have, you can't do gens. It's the best thing. That little spark of hope. Making them think they have the ability to do gens, but in reality, there's just nothing left. It's always oh, amusing. But anyway, now all we have to do is find the last person, because this girl is gonna probably not um, unhook the person. Because no way, if I was a survivor, well, at least every survivor I've fought against so far, in the past videos I made, this give up after um, being unable to, what's it called, win. But she actually unhooks her teammate, which is very surprising. Now I could go after her or go after the teammate because he's injured. But I choose to go after her because I rarely ever tunnel, even though it's at the end of the game, so at this point, is it really tunneling? But I'll go after her, and she's gonna go upstairs with the probably found by me. 
but I realized that he stopped being located by my drone, so that means he has to be inside this room, as planned. He's brought on this pallet. All I have to do really is get rid of this um, drone and reactivate it, and then get her exposed. But I didn't even try and do that, because I realized that um, if I try and do that, she's just gonna run away. So when I did do it, she falls down there, and then she's like, I give up. And I'm like, okay. So because of that reason, I'm like, well, I don't really have to worry. There's no way they're gonna be a like, complete two gens and one or two people only while I'm chasing one of them. So instead, I just buy my time and have fun, literally, and she's gonna get exposed because she went into my drone radius. I'm gonna use my untenable side effect to my advantage and try to make her vault the window. But sadly, she doesn't vault the window. There's no pallet here, so she can't go anywhere. So because of that reason, I know she's not gonna make this window. And she vaults it and she dies, as planned. So now I'm going to pick her up and hook this girl. Play in terms of activate, you know, the usual. Block every gen. There is nowhere for them to be other gens. And this guy is clearly not on my generator because he's inside my drone radius. So I'll hook her. She's done dead on the hook. Her death gives me sustenance. And all I have to do now is find Nicholas Cage. But more of my luck, the drone, the drone, the um, hatch will spawn in a really dumb location. I won't be able to find him. Luckily for me, the game was like, we're gonna bless you and you deserve good things. And the Hex Totem spawned me the hatch. My Hex Totem was like, we're gonna give you the hatch right here. So now the usual, we're gonna put a drone on both exit gates to be toxic. And there is no way the survivor is gonna be able to do the exit gates without me finding out where they are. So let's just kill him and let's fast forward to the part where he dies. Okay, and then you notice that I put a drone on both Exegate, as I said, and now he finally found where he is. He has to be on the Exegate because he is being located by my drone. And now he's exposed, and then he realizes that he's exposed, and he's like, well, I'm going to continue to open this gate anyway, I don't care. And I'm over here like, no, no. Death to all survivors, and he must die. So as a result, we're going to hook him on the same hook that I got last time Power Struggled on. And I'm over here like, if you have Power Struggle, I'm be mad, but luckily I never broke that pallet, and no one raised it back up. So easy death, and every single survivor dies as planned, and the toxic build wins. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Subscribe for more toxic gameplay maybe in the future, who knows, but, or maybe regular gameplay, because honestly, it was really fun to make this build, but like, doing this toxic gameplay feels kind of scrummy, scrummy, scummy, because this is funny. Like, it's not really anything that toxic, it's just funny, because it's like, they can't do anything, and I know they can't do anything, and it makes it so funny to deal with and to watch. Whenever they struggle, which is really funny. But this is what happens when the game lets you have toxic add-ons and toxic builds. But I'll see y'all in the next video. Hopefully, it'll be a little more tame than this toxic gameplay you just saw right now. Or maybe I'll make more videos with toxic gameplay in the future. Who knows? Hmm. We'll see what happens. But like I said, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all in the next video. Have a nice day.